Hello, Dr. J here. I'm going to provide a classification of signals in this video. Basically, what's the difference between a continuous time signal and a discrete time signal? And also, if we have time, we'll talk about odd and even signals. The initial focus on the classification of signals will be one-dimensional signals. I mean that we're going to deal with single-valued functions of time. And what do I mean by that? I mean that every instant of time, there is a unique value of function, and the value of function can either be real or complex. So let's start off with a continuous time signal, in where it is defined for all time t. We have this horizontal axis, which represents the time t horizon, and we have the vertical axis x of t, which can either be a voltage and a current. So here we have an example of a continuous time signal whose amplitude or value varies continuously with time. This continuous time signal usually arises when a physical waveform, such as a signal coming from a microphone or from a light sensor, and therefore this basically a transducer which converts this physical variable into an electrical waveform. Because x of t has an infinite number of values shown earlier as a function of time, this is not suited for digital signal processing. What we need to do is capture a discrete set of values, just enough to represent the accuracy and uh, reproduce this signal accurately when we need it. So instead of storing an infinite set of values, we just need to store a discrete set of values. So basically what we do is we sample the signal at a particular time and in this case we're going to sample and capture certain values of x of t at specific intervals in this case equal intervals known as the sampling period this resulting sequence of values will denote it as xn where n is an integer at various points in time now we're going to show mathematically the relationship of the continuous time signal shown here in the dash line and the discrete time signal where we captured specific set of values of x of t at specific values of time so in here we have this value captured at ts this value captured at time 2ts and this value at 3ts and so on down the line so we let t equal n ts where n is an integer and ts is the sampling period and 1 over ts denoted as fs is the sampling frequency and these series of values right here is called xn so this value of xn this discrete time signal is represented by a sequence of numbers starting from n equal minus infinity to positive infinity so here's x of t and we're going to substitute t for n t s as shown here and we're going to make this n t s here x with the argument of n t s will denote that as xn which is our discrete time signal or such a sequence is often referred to as a time series. So here's a block diagram in converting a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. Here we're given a continuous time signal, often also referred to as an analog signal, and here's our continuous to discrete time converter, where we have one form of an analog to digital converter, and here out pops a sequence of numbers known as a discrete time signal. You may ask, how often do we need to sample x of t? Well, it turns out we need to look in the frequency domain and see what the highest frequency content of the signal. So once we know the highest frequency, then we just simply need to sample the signal at twice the highest frequency of x t. But this will be shown in more detail in a future video. Uh, I did some earlier videos on that, but I want to redo it to show you 
why this is the case where you need to sample at twice the highest frequency. In order to duplicate XT when we convert this discrete time signal back to a continuous time signal. As an example to convert a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal, consider the following example where we define X of T is equal to 5 cosine 40 pi T. 40 pi is the radian frequency which implies that it's equal to 20 hertz because you can set 40 pi which is equal to 2 pi f solving for f gives you 20 hertz. We let t equal to n cap t s where t s is the sampling period and that leads to a time sequence or a discrete time se signal where we substitute t in as the argument or n t s in the argument of t here so that gives us 5 cosine 40 pi, substitute for t here, for n cap t s, and that gives you for when t s is equal to 0 0.25 or 1 over 40, so the 40s cancel out in the numerator and denominator since 0.025 is equal to 1 over 40, and that leaves us with 5 cosine pi n. So that's how you convert a signal x sub t into a discrete time signal shown here, 5 cosine pi n. Also note, when n is even, this is equal to 1, and when is odd, this is equal to negative 1. So this sequence fluctuates between plus 5 and minus 5. You can get a more accurate representation of xt through xn by having a smaller sampling period or increasing the sampling frequencies by getting more samples of XT. The next video will talk about even and odd signals and you can use the symmetry, the even and odd symmetry, to help reduce the amount of calculations you need such as calculating Fourier coefficients. Nevertheless, you have an even signal described by this mathematical relationship an odd signal described by this mathematical relationship and the next video will talk in more detail about odd and even signals.